Matthew, what is going on, bro? It's been a uh, it's been a little while since we last had a conversation. Um, I guess before we we properly dive into anything, perhaps you want to just let people know who you are, what it is that you do, and um, obviously how the sure. business is going at the moment. Yeah, so my name is Matt, and right now I run an agency in the outdoor home services contractor space. So I work with contractors in the US on a daily basis. And what was the third? Um, basically, just talking about how the business is doing at the moment. Business is doing well. I think we've achieved the goal that I initially set out to achieve when I spoke to Jack when he closed me on Imperium way back in the day. And we are now kind of in the process of scaling up even further. And eventually I want to leave the business, but that's a different conversation. Beautiful. Well, I guess kind of looping back to to that original phone call or an original meeting, I should say, because I was just listening back to the call um, about how really? long ago. And I remember you saying at that point in time, you were making about 5K per month the goal by the time that you got to 2024 was that you'd be making about 50k 40 50k per month how much is the the business doing at this point in time uh this month we just did 52 so we're pretty much right on but it's with a different i guess niche than what i was in initially but yes. i mean the, the the vehicle doesn't really matter as long as it the outcome was achieved the irony behind that because obviously at that point in time you're doing auto detailing um, yeah but so what what prompted the switch why did you decide to to transition away from that and how was that experience been um since working with the contractors yeah so so truthfully with the auto detailing i probably could have scaled up and it's 100 possible to scale up to that goal that i was talking about which is that sort of 50k mark although all of these numbers are fairly arbitrary once you actually start to scale up. But the amount of work, the effort that I was doing for the ticket price of the service as well, I, it's just kind of exhausting, to be honest. And you can call me a bitch or a wuss or whatever you want, but I stuck with the niche for about a year. And the biggest problems were that the niche was very broke. So you would get a lot of instances where you would have to be putting out client fires every single day and also selling, but you couldn't afford to hire good help like a CSM or a solid media buyer or a solid sales rep because you were only charging or I was only charging at the time between $750 to $1,300 per month retainers. And then they would have failed payments on the ad account or like they wouldn't be able to afford ad spend, like those sort of issues. So I ended up capping out in that niche. I believe my peak month, I only did like 22K mm -hmm. and I was like churning and burning through clients. And I just, I had to think about like what, what, what I was doing. And one of the clients that I had referred me to a contractor and asked if I could run ads for them. And I was like, I don't know. I'll give it a shot. And so I ran a free trial for him and I saw the ticket price of the jobs that were there. And so I was like, I'm going to shut this down and start this up in the new niche and see how it goes. Yes. So I remember you putting this post into the group. So in terms of the new niche, how long did it take you to scale from zero to 50K? So the first month solo, I did 40K, Damn. but ridiculous. <laughs> true. Yeah. And what is so, the ticket price that you're charging these clients as well? For five grand, call okay. it. That makes sense. And so there it was, I was just solo. And then the time of year just kind of happened to be that it was the slow season for, for that industry. And so everyone was very cash tight. So the subsequent months, like this November, December, January, February, or not February, but the, the winter months essentially were difficult to close because people wanted to run really lean. 
and not really spend anything. And at the same time, I was trying to hire people. I was trialing and erroring. So those, those months I averaged pretty consistently, just like 25 K, which was fine. Like it, it kept me afloat um, until we decided to make a, we decided to attend an in-person event for the niche in late January and subsequently go ahead and do a big push for February to see what we can do. And the results were obviously very positive and this month should also be a good month as well. Fantastic. Well, let's, yeah. let's bring this back to the product. Cause obviously you were in the previous version of the product since then we mm -hmm. transitioned into easy bro. Um, mm -hmm. obviously you were already running a business at that point in time. I actually remember our conversation pretty well, even though it was a, a while ago since it, that originally took place. Right, but right. I guess, I guess the, uh, the key question that I have for you, Matt, is what would you say are some of the biggest takeaways that you've got from actually being in the product and being able to leverage some of the, the resources that were in there? I'd say the, the systems building, for sure. I think the way that Charlie has structured the course in and of itself, without even talking about the content, is something to study and take a look at. And the way that he manages people and has everyone on board is also something to follow because of the way that you guys are all A players. Uh, you're obviously on the sales team or heading the sales team, right? So that was definitely one big takeaway for me from Charlie himself. As for the course content, the course content is extremely, extremely good for beginner level, I think. And especially when you don't have the funds to do outreach and stuff like that, or sorry, paid ads, not outreach. It's perfect for learning how to do cold outreach and will very easily scale you from zero to 10, 15K a month, 20K a month. And I think also the community aspect of it is very beneficial. Although I'm not super active in it these days, just because I'm trying to focus on the day-to-days in my own operation. The people that I was able to meet, speak to, and my media buyer now, for instance, is someone that I met in the community, right? Someone who works with me full-time right now is, is someone who I met through Easy Grow. So from that aspect, I would definitely make the argument that it's very beneficial for any person starting out, especially in the agency space, that this is the go-to program and this is the go-to individual to follow if you want to scale or learn properly how to run a sustainable agency okay on this note prior mm -hmm. to jumping into imperium prior to jumping into easy grow had you done courses in the past and if so obviously without naming names where would you say you see the differences between what you've done in the past and perhaps some of the stuff that we present to, to our clients? I think it all comes down to, I have, so to answer your question, yes, I have done courses in the past. They were all like the beginner level courses from YouTubers that everyone probably knows. And what I would say is more prevalent here would simply be the content. There's, I've been in a lot of courses. I've seen a lot of courses, whether they were paid or someone gave them to me, right? Or I have the logins for them. And the actual content in and of itself, you can tell is very thought out. And I think, again, it goes back to the systems and you can tell that there is a really big focus on the actual product, which is always good, right? So that's what I think differentiates the program from others, I think is the depth and the actual content that's contained within the product of itself. Yeah. And I, I can speak to this as well. Like Charlie and Bo are obsessed, like obsessed with just constantly improving the product, adding new modules, adding more coaching calls, literally, I think today, or even if it wasn't today, yesterday, I'm not sure if you've seen it, they've released a whole new module teaching people who've got to your position where you're doing 50K, how to start an info product business, how to then scale that to a million dollars per month. So we're always super, super keen to make sure that the product is as good as it could possibly be. It's it's really funny that you say that as well, because I know that 
Charlie also preaches like focusing on just having a good product all around. Most people ignore that, obviously, as you know, right? Most, most people are going to ignore that. Everyone wants the fast money. And I mean, as soon as you actually start focusing on the product and the service delivery side, or, or just making sure that your model makes sense or that incentives are aligned, or as soon as you have like happy clients and, and you actually care about the clients, then you get a lot more of them because like the amount of closes that we've gotten this month from referrals has been pretty big. So Beautiful. Okay. Well, with all of this in mind, obviously the goal originally was to get to 50k. You've made it happen. So congratulations yeah. on that front. Thank you. We have got a lot of time left before we get to 2025. Matt, yeah. what is the plan? Because obviously the sky's the limit at this point in time. What is the plan by the time we get to 2025? Truthfully, I'm a bit lost. <laughs> I don't I don't really know. I obviously want to scale to like that six figure mark and get to 100 clients because with the model that I'm running with them, 100 clients would yield me a lot of recurring. The goal right now, specifically in this moment, is to build out a very good recurring system with very little churn so that uh, we're introducing like a lower ticket product that incorporates a low ticket recurring that people end up being buying on. In a good way, of course, we're not trying to scam anybody. Um, and that's in the works right now. But the goal by the end of the year is to be able to, I guess I'll set the arbitrary number of being able to have 100K per month recurring revenue with very minimal effort. And basically it being almost autonomous so that I can pivot to a potentially different opportunity than agency. Okay, beautiful. I guess the last question that I've got for you, Matt, is this. If you were to take yourself back to when we first had our conversation, yeah. and perhaps you're looking at this from the perspective of somebody who's on the fence, right? Yeah. They're not sure whether they should do this, regardless of whether they're literally just getting started or similar to you, you know, they had a little bit underneath them, a little bit of momentum behind them. What would be what would it be that you would say to, to somebody who's kind of sitting in that position, they're sitting on the fence, they're not sure if this is going to be the right investment for them? Well, I'd say every situation is different. And so you really have to take a close look at, at the position that you're in and the, the position that your business is in. Is it consistent? Are you stagnant? Are you looking for a way to like hyperscale your growth? And then... Ultimately, I would tell you to just pull the trigger because it's not only content that will help you regardless of what you need, but more so when you spend the money, it gives you accountability to actually do the things that you know you need to do, but may have been putting off. So with the position that you're currently in, it is more than likely that the program is going to be a big investment. So go ahead and take the leap because it will not only pay for itself, but it will force you to do the things that you know you have to do, but are not doing right now and more. I love that word. I think that's very, very true. Well, look, do you have anything else that you want to bring to the table? Anything that you want to share with people? Not particularly. I don't think I did anything special other than to focus on making a good product in a sustainable industry, make sure you pick your niche very carefully because a lot of these niches, and I mean, I, I could even say this for my own to an extent, like a lot of people won't want to buy from you because if you were really, really good at what you're doing, you would make more money doing the actual thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these niches are like unless they're medical unless they're a lot of home services stuff where like you physically don't know how to do them or like you know it takes a while to be a lawyer type of thing then they're not really needs you might just be pushing a product that people don't want and you're going to be fighting for straws so beautiful well, look, Matt, I appreciate the time. I'm excited to see you get to that 100K mark when you do. Please let me know, bro. Um, but again, 
well done on the progress that thus far. There's big things ahead. And um, I look forward to doing this again when you get Thank to Thank you, man. Bye. Appreciate Bye. it.